Today, we're going to be going over the top 10 best bot lines for the new PvE system in Shindle Life. So if you guys enjoyed this video, over the subscribe and subscribe to the video, guys. All right, so coming at 10th place is actually going to be Rune Kachu. Now, this is one of the most forgotten bloodlines in the game currently, but Rune Kachu has always been an actually really good bloodline that people just don't really care about. So the reason why Rune Kachu is actually so good is honestly going to be because not only does the bloodline itself have a ton of stuns, but it actually has quite a lot of damage output as well. Not only that, but obviously bosses are affected by counters and stuns now. Now? Well, he didn't hit me. You <laughs> little hard to get affected by counters and stuns when they don't hit you. But with the new PV system, obviously counters and stuns are really, really good. And pretty much Rude Kachu is kind of just only counter stuns and just massive damage output. So I'm gonna be honest, if it comes to just you're looking for just a pretty good bloodline that you won't really have to use anything else with, just because it is one of those bloodlines, because it's like boom, you do that. There's no end lag attached to it, so you can just you can pretty much just spam the abilities and lag out, apparently, because this is making my computer lag so hard. But all in all, I mean, like Rude Kachu, it has a pretty good stun, it has pretty good ability. It has pretty good damage output in general. All right, so coming in ninth place is actually going to be Ten Goku. Now you guys know why this is here. Ten Goku is just overall a really, really high DPS KG. Now the only issue with Ten Goku is now that bosses are affected by stuns, you might have to add a stun attack into it. But obviously, Ten Goku just does have just an absolute absurd damage amount. It's one of the highest damage KGs currently in the game. Like you guys can see, I'm just spamming the abilities and already have 300,000 damage on them. Plus the mention that the M1s are ranged and do actually have stun attached to it. So I mean, like all in all, Ten Goku is a pretty good. KG for the new PV system. It was really good for the old one as well. Something you're going to find out, which is actually kind of hilarious, is that the best KGs are honestly very similar to what they used to be. The high damage KGs that have done a lot of damage still do a lot of damage, so not much has changed. In all, in, in all honesty, like, the main things that change is that you just can't do the glitches that you used to do anymore, so kind of like the top three is different, but other than that, like, everything else is pretty similar, all things considered. Now, coming in eighth place is actually going to be Shiro Glacier. I am using Zero Glacier, by the way, because I just think it looks so much cooler, but it does, like, I mean, like, Shiro Glacier has always been and always will be good in general as a bloodline. It is another one of the really underrated bloodlines that people just don't really use. Tons of stuns, tons of damage output, and the fact that you can fly and just pretty much just spam click on them is, is an insane thing. This guy is saying, I need reinforcements right now. Um, that's definitely new, but, you know, let, let's be real here. Shiro Glacier is a very good KG. Not only that, but it actually can be used for traveling, as you guys can see, with very slight chi consumption and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, Shiro Glacier, all in all, let's be real here. It's a pretty good KG in general. Now coming to seventh place is going to be Kamaki Akuma. You guys probably expected this just because Kamaki Akuma is just a really good KG in general. But let, let's be real here with Kamaki Akuma. Oh, I forgot that this, they summon this Samurai Tail Beast. So that's a little that's a little odd. But Kamaki Akuma has a ton of stun attacks. It has a ton of you know really high damage abilities. And obviously guys, the counter of the KG is insanely good. So with the counter of the actual mode, if you spam the counter while the boss is actually attacking you and they attack you multiple times, it will do a ton of damage to them. Like you guys can see the counter is actually still triggered on me and depending on the amount of things that the boss actually does to you this could actually make kamaki akumi even better than it would be normally man this samurai spirit whoa i forgot how annoying the samurai spirit bosses are to fight when you can't just xeno dokai glitch them <laughs> like you can't i can't do the glitch anymore all right that's it it's counter time come here man not only that but it does actually have a raised m1 mode which is obviously insanely good for fighting and kamaki kuma it's a pretty good bloodline for pve content i mean like there's nothing really much else to say now coming to sixth place is actually going to be minikaze they tried to hit me as i'm moaning up that's not very nice bro come here come here who do you think you are guess what you could get stunned now so i could actually attack you but minikaze you could do every single combo you could do a pvp so it is an insanely good mode just for you know pv content because like i said they do get stunned now so you could pretty much just do the same combos you do for pve i mean pvp content and it will work out now it is worth mentioning that uh minikaze it's not really good on its own it's mostly just good for the second and third ability of minikaze also it is really annoying how the bosses teleport to you now isn't it they used to not do that like they just teleport straight to you now that's pretty annoying that's something new with that i've noticed very 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 irritating but minikaze is a pretty good bloodline for pve content and it can be good for getting around as well if your friends are trying to do pve content without you all right so the two honorable mentors are actually going to be snake man and inferno basically any traveling bloodline one of the most underrated things about pve content is the ability to travel now most of the travel abilities unfortunately were nerfed but any bloodline with traveling abilities is going to be an honorable mention as well with snake man the reason why snake man is not going to be higher on this list is honestly just because the damage output was severely nerfed but it still does a lot of damage like you guys can see i'm still doing a lot of damage he still gets stunned by the abilities snake man is still a really really good bloodline for pve content it's just the cooldowns are a little bit too high compared to a lot of the other bloodlines on this list quite frankly and i do think that you could do a little bit better but it definitely isn't terrible for the new pve system by the way guys let me know what your favorite bloodline for pve is nowadays in the comments below because i am very interested to find that out now starting out the top five is going to be ashura ruby otherwise known as ashura shizen i am using the skin because i do think it looks better now like you guys can see the mode 
damage rate on this mode is absolutely small compared to what it does. And I'm going to be honest, raised block M1 modes are kind of like the th the go-to for PvE content now because they allow you to stun the boss like you guys can see. I can M1 this guy and okay, well, I can't M1 him. But as you guys can see, you can M1 the bosses and be not be actually hit by them. Not only that, but Assure Season has a ton of stun abilities and it actually does do a lot of damage compared to a lot of the other blends in this game. So I do think Assure Season, when it comes down to it, is an insanely good bloodline for the new PvE system. And look at this. I got something that I haven't gotten before. That's pretty cool. Now, starting off the top four is actually going to be Getsuga. Now, Getsuga, let's be real here. It's kind of like a, it's a pretty good bloodline in general. Not only that, but it has pretty massive stun attacks when you actually decide to land them. So like you guys can see, you know, the abilities, they do quite a bit of damage. It it's just a raised block M1 mode. One of the highest raised block M1 modes in the game, by the way, as you guys can see, like they can't do anything against you. Oh, well, they can if, um, they can if they hit you, I guess. Not only that, but obviously it does have quite high damage output and the stun attack is pretty good if you can manage to land it. I keep missing it. There will be times when he's standing still. Oh man, Dio Psycho, this boss has iframes. Very annoying. But like you guys can see, uh, just by me spamming the raised M1 mode, something you're going to see a very, very similar with the top four here. They all will be raised M1 modes. Not only that, but Getsuka does give you your MD back when you actually hit the abilities. So that is quite an amazing thing. And it does have quite a lot of stun attacks as well. Now, starting off the top three with coming back actually in the action is going to be Shindai Rengoku. I am, of course, using Shindai Ra because let, let's be real if you use if you use a shindai red or not use a shindai ramen what are you even doing but first of all it's worth mentioning that the counter of this mode actually works properly now well if you can land it holy crap man the boss and obviously it does have one of the highest raised block modes out of any of the modes in the game so you can't just you can't just kind of just spam abilities and spam m1s on them and it will actually work it's also worth mentioning that it does have a lot of abilities that involve you being stuck in the air like you guys can see it's really hard for the boss to hit you properly if you're stuck in the air like you guys can see look like well <laughs> Man, the whole teleporting thing is very annoying. I'm going to try and use the counter on him now. Hit me. All right. So the boss isn't... I'm getting really unlucky with this boss attacks. But when it comes down to it, Shindai Ren, really, really good bloodline, really, really good stun attacks, and it has quite high damage output, all things considered. I'm going to try and land the counter just so you guys can see how well this counter does. Look, I'm just spamming M1s, and since the M1 is actually so high, you literally cannot... Like, he can barely do any damage against me. All right, let's see if he actually decides to hit me now. There we go. Finally, man. It's also worth mentioning that you do want to stun them while the clones are attacking. Let me finish them off. You know what, Dio Senko? You are the most annoying freaking boss after this boss change. Get wrecked. Get, get Shindai Ren. Get, get Shindai Ren. Get out of my face, boy. I'm an M1 spam on your mama. What are you doing, man? Starting off the top two is going to be the legendary Shindai Kuma. You guys knew this was going to be here. I mean, like, you could pretty much just go into full Samurai Spirit Shindai Kuma. I would recommend not doing it for that long. But you might just go into full Samurai Spirit and just spam abilities. That's literally it for Shindai Kuma. You just go into full Samurai Spirit, spam a ton of the abilities, and that's pretty much is all there is to Shindai Shindai Kuma. Now, you don't actually need to go into the third one of Shindai Kuma to actually spam it properly, just because, I mean, the fourth mode, just because the third mode does work just fine, but the fourth mode does obviously allow you to get a lot of the things that you wouldn't normally get, like massive clones on the actual abilities, but it's worth mentioning that the fourth mode does drain a ton of MD, but with a bunch of clones being spammed, if you have multiple friends helping you and you guys just spam a bunch of clones at people, it actually does work quite well. Oh my gosh, dude, some of these bosses, they're like, after these changes, man, ho! Oh. All right, you know what? You know what? sir it's time i'm a spam let me go ahead and do this while the clones are attacking i'm a heal and then boom just keep stunning him oh yeah look at the shindai kuma happening right now bro oh get comboed now coming to first place probably as a surprise to absolutely nobody is going to be aizen i mean like let, let's be real here for a second aizen is just really really good i mean it has a bunch of stun attacks it has a ton of clone attacks i mean like it also does a ton of damage on the c-spec and you could literally just spam m once like look at this i am so far up in the air okay well he hit me with his third ability that's not very fair sir but you could literally just like if you ever start to die you could just immediately use the weapon spec and just spam m1 to them like look at this look at this like what is he gonna do against me he can't do anything because i'm flying <laughs> like it ob this obviously does drain a ton of mode but don't forget that you can also cast abilities while you're in this as well which will make you do even more damage so aizen is going to be the single best bloodline for the new pv system probably as a surprise to absolutely nobody if this video helped you out make sure to hit that like button subscribe hosting also guys bye bye